Let's play a game. It's called Drop the Bag. The rules are very simple. All you must do is be a multi-billion dollar game publisher or a multi-million dollar game developer. To win, the object of the game is to create a worldwide popular first-person shooter, define a genre, and be the top dog for multiple years, generate billions of dollars in sales year after year, and then ignore the fan base, do what you want, all the while monetizing your own watered-down content by promoting skins and bundle packs rather than providing your loyal customer base with a game the majority would like to play continuously. We have the envelope. All right, here we go. Hmm, the winner of the first inaugural award for dropping the bag is, oh, this is unprecedented. We have a two-way tie, Infinity Ward and Activision. All right, guys, welcome back. Sh shenanigans aside, let's get into it. Activision and Infinity Ward have managed to pull off the previously unthinkable. They have managed to sink the Call of Duty franchise, and yes, that includes Black Ops for all those who want to separate them, you know, to all-time lows. Mismanagement and ineptitude from the top all the way down has permeated these two companies. The sheer corporate greed is astonishing, even in these times. COD has gone from a much beloved and entertaining game to a slog fest of sparse, replayable content and overpackaged bundles. Every season we receive more bundles and less actual, you know, playable content. This is just one of the main complaints that players have. COD is currently existing on the fumes of a once great franchise propped up on players' memories of nostalgia. Most of you watching this video, much like me, grew up on and enjoyed playing just about all of the COD franchise entries. We would go out to GameStop for that, you know, Tuesday night, midnight drop, and uh, come home immediately, hop on with our friends, and, and have at it. You know, my friends would hop right into the multiplayer and check out all the maps. You know, I would go straight to the campaign and complete that before I ever played any multiplayer content. I know, I know. I'm just wired that way. Uh, think about it. We would actually go out and get a physical copy of the game. There would be a lot of excitement and anticipation for the release. That doesn't even exist anymore. The game is being met with far more harsh criticism, including this one, and you know, and a wait to see, you know, how they mess it up attitude from the players, and rightfully so. When we started to grow tired of the same maps, the developer would finally give you a map pack, you know, for just a few dollars. I think it was like uh, five or ten dollars, you know, and off you'd go. If your friend didn't have the latest map pack, you were, you know, appalled that they didn't, you know, they had the nerve not to get it. You know, you were stuck playing all the old maps until they finally got on board and bought the pack. This is the exact point where we went wrong. Publishing and development studios noticed the clamor for in-game purchases. The difference from then until today was that we had gatekeepers. You know, developer studios that wanted and did make great content that was worth your hard-earned money. Studios seemed to care about, you know, how the community received and enjoyed their product, you know, their game. Studio heads that took time out of their days, you know, or nights to communicate with the community, to play with the community, to interact with the community, us, the players, the purchasers of their product. These were truly the good times, the golden days of COD. You know, say what you will and feel free to, digress, you know, to disagree with me, but to me, this was peak COD. Then it all changed. As the game grew in popularity and size, there was less and less communication. Less chance, you know, for one-on-one -on -one or one-to-many interaction with the studio heads. They weren't streaming live Q&A sessions as much as they used to, you know, if at all. We wanted more content, more things to do, more Easter eggs, more maps, more zombies, more, more, more. They simply didn't have the time to respond 
they had to make content. This called for investment capital. The games were growing and the community needed to as well. They do actually have shareholders to answer to. And with that comes expectations, financial reports and uh, profit speculation, you know, that sort of thing. Uh, these somewhat independent studios were ripe for the picking and in swept companies like Activision, you know, always on the lookout for a good investment, they scooped up Infinity Ward, then began the downfall. We were like jilted lovers, you know, our significant others just stopped talking to us and giving us what we wanted. They gave us less and less. They had a new love. You guessed it. Money. M-O-N-E-Y. Uh, they would do anything they could for the love of money. Isn't that, isn't that a song? The love of money? Yeah, but I, you know, I digress. Uh, it did happen at all, you know, all at once, so it, you know, it was less noticeable, or it didn't happen all at once, but um, you know, there were a few of us that noticed something was off in the Matrix. Most who spoke up were silenced. While content varies from you know, each iteration of a game to the next, uh, which is normal, especially when you use multiple studios you know, with their own inimitable styles, uh, there was a new noticeable constant. Skins were starting to become more popular, you know, a thing that had to be had by most. Uh, if you didn't get a new skin, then why not? It's only $2, then another skin you know, for your other gun, that's $2. You can see where this is all going. With each purchase, with each mention on social media, you know, of the new gun, the new skin, the new this or that, you know, a wave of FOMO was created, which is, you know, fear of missing out for those who don't know what it means by now. I'm sure most of you do, if not all of you. Um, all the while, Activision and companies, you know, like it were gathering every bit of data they could and implementing rudimentary ways to get players to buy more essentially meaningless in-game content, you know, like a weapon skin, you know, and like a gun skin, you know, anything that could get you to, you know, part with your money. They created the useless crossover skins, you know, concepts that are still in the game to this day. Hello, Shredder? How are the turtles doing? Um, outrageously multicolored and in my opinion, stupid looking skins marked towards children. Children, they're not supposed to be playing this game, but you know they really are. Remember loot boxes and the lawsuits filed against Activision Blizzard, you know, from attorneys general all over the country that followed their implementation? That 23 page bad boy filed in March of 2016 was a shot across the bow against Activision and their ilk. And you know, I recommend you read it just to get an overview of the length of what these companies will go to just to drain you of your money. You know, the way they will twist and turn and research or invent new and insidious ways to rob you of a dollar, a crown, or whatever currency you use where you are. You know, I'll link it in the description uh, above or below, but please educate yourself and give it a read. This is what they do instead of letting the studios produce good content that players want content that would keep players invigorated and coming back for more. In their eternal quest for riches beyond belief, they forgot that the best way to keep the cash cow happy and ready for milking is to create content that your customer base wants, not what you think they want. It's okay to try and be innovative to make the game better. You know, there is absolutely nothing wrong with that at all. If it works, that's great, but if it, you know, is a measurable failure, you know, by community standards, then either remove it or tweak it to make it better if possible. And while you're at it, address the bugs in your system that affect players' interactions with your game. When you spend more and more time and effort adding products for your store instead of addressing, you know, potentially game-breaking bugs, glitches, and the like, then you lose customers. You know, players are dropping like flies in the dead of winter when it comes to this game. No amount of in-game purchase is going to change that and bolster your overflowing coffers when there is no one left to play your game. At that point, you're no better than those seasonal stores you see popping up. Once the summer is over, you know, those lawn chairs you're selling aren't going to do jack to help me shovel my driveway when the snow comes. 
This is where you're headed to at warp speed. Why do you refuse, for the most part, to address your customer base? The attempts that you do make show that you are clearly out of touch with the gamers that you do covet to prop up your game. Each time you release a new COD, you give us less to start with, and you want to drip feed content while pushing out store products at an alarming rate. You know, as always, you know, you reserve the right to change a skin after it's purchased by a consumer, even if you deem it necessary, just like you did with the black CDL skin. That was a hell of a bait and switch. You know, your, your most recent bait and switch is the red and black anarchy skin. You know, that nuke skin or the one that looks like a nuke skin. Yeah, that one. You know, you got some decent hits on that, you know, myself included, since I had some leftover COD points, you know, that I just wanted to get rid of. And then you put out the exact same skin with no red in it, but just a gold mask. Talk about going to the well twice. And by most accounts, this is pay to win like the Bush Wookiee ghillie suit. You sure are a shameless, duplicitous bunch, aren't you? You know, how about fixing that mortar strike mission in DMZ? You know, I'm just asking for a friend. You know, well, actually, all of us. You know, you tweeted that you're aware of the problem, but being aware and fixing the problem are two entirely different things. You know, you've pumped out at least three to four different bundles since that bug from what I'm seeing. There are more missions like this in DMZ, you know, where work is being put in, but not being counted. You know, all the while players are getting frustrated and leaving. Some are done with COD completely. You know, we are seeing this more and more. Longtime players that are fed up with the direction of this franchise, throwing up their hands and dumping this game, going to your competitors in the battle royale genre and having more fun. Heck, you even have players raving about a COD-like game on Roblox, for goodness sakes. Roblox. Even Dr. Disrespect is coming out with a game in Alpha that might just eat away at your customer base if you don't get your ish together. You know, the old bird in the hand is worth two in the bush analogy is the perfect example of your greed, overwhelming common business sense and practices. This is how COD dropped the bag. Well, with that, it's your time, and I thank you for spending it with me. Have a great day. I'm getting too old for this sort of thing.